How's everyone going? You're back with Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to have a look at the surface area of pyramids. And I know that we've done a lot of surface area stuff in the last couple of lessons, but this is probably where all our skills need to be used at the same time. So again, we've got to follow the exact same steps for these surface area questions. We have to work out what shapes are actually within this three-dimensional shape. Then we've got to find the area of all the shapes present, and then we just have to add them up. So as long as you've got that really clearly in your mind, these pyramids, even though there are extra steps, will become quite cruisy. So the hardest thing for these pyramids is making sure that we've got the correct value for the height. I know you're thinking, John, it's just the height of the pyramid. How could that be that different? But making sure that we understand kind of the subtleties between a few things is really important for this. So I want you to imagine kind of a top view of a pyramid. Right? This would be us looking straight down on the pyramids in Egypt, right? You'd have the points, and then it would look like you've got four triangles going below it, and they would make a shape on the ground. So for this one, I've got a rectangle. So obviously a rectangle is one of the shapes I've got to find. And then I've got four triangles. Two of them are in pairs, right? The ones using that same side length of the rectangle. Those two go together and the other two also go together as well. So one way that we could work out the area of this pyramid is to create a net. So that's where we fold all the triangles around that rectangular base. And from here you'd go, oh, Jono, this is easy as. We've got a rectangle and I've just got to find out two pairs of triangles, happy days. But the important thing for this pyramid is I've got to use the height of the triangle that is now on my net. So that is this green line that's going straight through the middle. The area of this is obviously just a half times base times height, but the height there is not actually the height of the actual pyramid. It's what we call the slant height or the height on the side. I sometimes think about this as like, it's the steps up the pyramid. That's what we've got to use, not the actual altitude of this entire shape. So just in this drawing here, I've made a bit of an exaggerated version so you can see why these two things are so different. I am actually pretty proud of this drawing. Took me ages to do unfortunately but if we look at that height there right it's not that high at all but i'm saying that that whole side of that rectangle is incredibly long and then the height of my triangle that i'm standing at at the base is quite short if i then rotated that height from where it is to the height of the slant height so the actual steps going up to that top bit it would look something like this that's obviously way smaller than the height of the actual pyramid so the height of the triangle is different to the height of the actual pyramid that is given. And that's what makes these questions a little bit difficult. So the first example we've got here is where the slant height is given. These are the easier types of questions because we've been given the height of the triangle that we need to find. These ones are pretty cruisy. I do like to use different types of pens or different colors just to make sure I've got everything down. You obviously don't have to, but it is something that just scaffolds everything in my mind that I would recommend you do if you are struggling. So obviously I've got the base of the rectangle as my first shape. I just have to multiply seven and 10, which will give me 70. Happy days, that's nice and easy. So then to find out the area of these two red triangles, I would just have to do a half multiplied by 14 times by 10. But because I've got two of them, I have to multiply it by two. And just as a trick to make this a little bit quicker, because a triangle is a half, and I've got two of them, those two things cancel out. So all I have to do is the 14 times 10, which gives me 140 meters squared. And then I've just got to do the same thing for the green triangles as well. Throw that in your calculator, 22 multiplied by seven is 154 meters squared. Then to get my full mark, I just have to add these three numbers together. So all I have to do to finish off is to go 70 plus 140 plus 154, which gives me the answer of 364 meters squared that's done. So when they get harder is when the altitude or the actual height of the pyramid is given and not the slant length. So you do have to make sure that you are looking for this when these questions pop up. So what we're looking for is the slant height of each side. These are going to be different. So you just can't use that 40 and think, yep, done. So we're looking for this blue and green line that come down from here. So if I want to draw a triangle here or like a little slice out of this pyramid, I can take a line straight down that altitude from the very tip down to the base. Now, if I assume that this base is exactly level, that baseline is going to be exactly perpendicular to that, hot, to that vertical line that we just drew. That means that I've got 
a right angle at the bottom. And then my slant length there is going to be the hypotenuse, or that's how many steps I would have to take to get to the top of this pyramid. So then we've just got a nice easy Pythagoras to do in order to find the slant length. The only thing that is kind of difficult to see conceptually is that that base length that we're taking is going to be half of the other side of the rectangular base. And that's where students do make a mistake. They just put the wrong numbers in the wrong spot. So I would highly recommend using a highlighter or different colors just to make sure we nail down this point. So all we've got to do now is we've got two side lengths. The height is always going to be the same. And then half of the other side of the rectangle, throw into Pythagoras and you're done. So to find out the slant length of that green side, I just have to go 40 squared plus 15 squared, okay? Because it's partnered with that 30. And then I just have to square root the answer for that. If I throw that into my calculator, I get the answer of 42.72 meters. And that makes sense. It's got to be longer than the total height, right? It is the hypotenuse, but it's not a crazy number that, that is that much bigger. And then to find the slant length of the blue side, which is going to be different, I have to use that 40 again. So I've got 40 squared, and this time I've got plus 10 squared. If I throw that into my calculator and square root the answer, I get the number 41.23 meters. And this actually does usually happen. The longer side will have a shorter slant length, and then the shorter side will have a longer slant length. So that's something just to check up on as you're going, just to make sure that this does make sense. So now I'm in the same position that I was when I was given the slant lengths. I can just work out the question here. I've got one rectangle plus two triangles. So the base is just gonna be 20 multiplied by 30, happy days. Do throw it in brackets if you can, because it'll just make your working out really clear for your teacher, just in case something goes wrong in your calculator. And then because I've got two triangles, those two green triangles that are identical, all I have to do is multiply the slant length by the base. So this is just 42.72 multiplied by 30 for the green one. And then for the blue one, I have to do 41.23 multiplied by 30. As long as I put all of those in, again, remembering that because I've got the two triangles, I can get rid of the half and the two, they cancel out. You just throw that into your calculator and you're gonna get the correct answer. So if I throw this into my calculator, I get the answer of 2,691.30 meters squared. And that's my final answer. So I know that this lesson was a little bit more difficult, especially for this surface area topic, but just making sure that we identify what the slant length is every time will get you more than halfway to getting these correct. Apart from that, it's just triangles and rectangles all over again. So identifying the slant length is your number one goal when you approach this question. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.